Hi, I'm Jessica Ann Pressler, licensed clinical social worker coming to you from the West Coast. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Jessica. And I'm Sylvia Puentes, registered nurse, faith-based coach, and mentor coming to you from the East Coast. If you like our video content, hit the link to subscribe below. This week, we are discussing the malignant narcissist. This will be going along the same time that I introduced my blog at jessicaannpressler.com. And Sylvia and I do an Instagram live on Friday about the same subject. How are you, Sylvia? I'm doing well. So we've already discussed the um, overt and the covert narcissist. And today we're discussing the malignant narcissist. What is the difference or how is the malignant narcissist different from the other two? Well, a malignant narcissist can be overt or covert. Overt in that it's more obvious. It's the grandiose. It's the one you, most people think about when they think about the, you know, the larger than life, the conceited. I mean, I'm not, that's one a common use word uh, person. The covert one, which we discussed is the ones that are more um, private, that things go on more um covertly, secretly. It's the person that may play the victim. So the malignant narcissist can be either one and uh, and can use various tactics. But what makes them malignant is that they're actually cruel. And they have, now all narcissists most have little to no empathy. And so a malignant narcissist is no different, but they almost come across as having almost no conscience. And they um, there's a sometimes a small a, a thin line between a sociopath and a malignant mm-hmm. narcissist. And mm-hmm. my understanding is, and there may be many differences, but one of which is a malignant narcissist still cares about what people think of them, where a sociopath just doesn't care. They're just cold. They can have no emotion. Where a, mi- a malignant narcissist can be emotional. So that's mm-hmm. one way of, of telling um, the difference. I mean, that sounds pretty. Um extreme i mean to to a malignant narcissist you know be somewhat compared to a sociopath what would be the characteristic traits of a malignant narcissist well so we talk about the spectrum of narcissism because i'm not talking about what's in the dsm-5 uh, revised right. but I'm, I'm speaking about the common the words that we use and in, in, as a as the lingo of a narcissist traits so there's a spectrum and the malignant narcissist would be the worst of of, of the spectrum. So they're, they're very out for um, power and control. They um, lie often They're Let's just take a romantic relationship, but it could be in any, I mean, they're in every relationship, but they're the, they're liars, they're cheaters, which can happen in business as well. And families, they have absolutely no regard for what they, they do to you. So let's just take an example in a business relationship. Um, they work for someone, but they may be skimming money out of, let's say it's a store out of the cash register. And basically they're just thinking like, I got away with this because I'm smarter than you. I mean, there really isn't any care in the world that that person may not have um, dinner that that night. You know, there's a complete disregard where not all narcissists are like that. Uh, They, um, like other ones, you know, like other narcissists, they may somewhere inside have low self-esteem and may have had childhood trauma, um, uh, which created who they are today. But that doesn't mean that they're not horrifically abusive. They um, are, they can be, I should say, physically abusive, mentally abusive, verbally abusive, emotionally abusive, financially abusive, and not a care in the world. They just don't care as long as they're getting their needs met. Right. So what would you recommend that someone who is in a relationship with a malignant narcissist do? Okay, so if possible, run away but I know that's not always possible. So um, as we have um, spoken about with all the different narcissists that we've spoken about, knowledge is key. So you know who they are and what to expect and to realize that you're not alone. So boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. And if you can't do the boundary of completely cutting them off and run away because of many different reasons, it's family, they are the father of your children, uh, you have to work for them and you're your boss, whatever it is, then you just don't emotionally engage somewhere inside and it's hard to do realize that what they say and do has to do with their own needs and it's not personal to you so don't try not to let them hurt you 
because and they will try to hurt you. They will learn your vulnerabilities. They will be the one in the first, let's just say the first day they meet you and ask you questions and make you feel like you they, they care about you. And then they will take those vulnerabilities and use them later on. I mean, they really are cruel. And so the best thing you can do if you have to stay in the relationship is to have at least emotional boundaries so they can't hurt you. And it's easier said than done. It's almost impossible, mm -hmm. especially if you love them. So honestly, the best thing you can do is remove yourself and cut them off completely. But again, life is life and that's not always possible. And also these are the ones that can be physically abusive. So if you're in, let's say a romantic relationship and you do make those boundaries, make sure you're protected, make sure you get legal advice, make sure that you get um that you are you set yourself up in a very safe place because there is a risk of being hurt by some of them as well yeah and you know as you said it's for the common person let's say i you know i don't know how else to express that but it is difficult to emotionally disconnect mm -hmm. and yet still remain in a relationship with you know whomever right um so this is such a, uh, you know, a, a difficult task. Yes. Um, and then the other thing would be how important it is then to have that support system and that someone know what is going on. It is key to have that support system, someone to be there, someone to be your ears, someone to, you know, make sure that you're trying to help you be physically safe. And if you do run away, they can protect you. Vital vital right. to have someone to talk to. And you know what, with all my profession, I mean, I've been in relationships like this and with all my knowledge, I couldn't cut it off. You get hurt. You're human. How do you not get hurt? It's just, you know, the ideal to strive for is to be able to, if you have to stay in the relationship, um, minimal engagement and, uh, and, and try, you know, try, try, try not to be emotionally affected. But again, you know, it's not always yeah, possible. It's it's not that. easy. And usually how soon into a relationship, let's say it's a romantic relationship, obviously not like a familial relationship, but how soon into the relationship would you notice with the, the common person start noticing these signs? Well, it depends how good they are at what they do. And, uh, but no, no, some, most, many times they will love bomb you in some way. And so you're feeling the high and all this is on purpose. I mean, they may feel the high too. I'm not saying they don't. And then um, when they start doing things that are painful and they don't care about it. So if you, if let's say they'd say something, let's say they flirt with a woman right in front of you and you say it hurts you. Um, if you're with a kind, compassionate person who's not a malignant narcissist, they will care about your feelings and they will say, I'm so sorry that I hurt you and uh, I won't do that again. And they'll try not to do that again. If you were with a malignant narcissist, they couldn't care less that they hurt you. If anything, they like it. It's powerful. It's, you know, it's makes them feel that you care about them, which makes them feel good about themselves and they'll keep doing it. They won't care about how you feel. So that's one red flag. They just won't take your feelings um, in regard to anything that they do. Yeah. Well, not only powerful, I assume they'll feel that they have the control right. and Power that's and where, control. that's where, that's where they like to be. hundred percent. Correct. That's what they thrive for. They live on right. that. Right. All true. All so. true. Very scary. Very, uh, you know, just very hurtful, very dangerous emotionally and could be physically, mentally to be involved with right. um, a malignant narcissist. And dangerous in all the ways that you just mentioned. And if you're in a romantic relationship, they many of them really do lie and cheat. So be careful because you have physically your your life is in danger if they're sleeping around. So mm -hmm. really important to protect yourself. Yeah. Thank wow. You. <laughs> wonderful speaking to you today. Yeah, wonderful speaking to you. Thank you for so much important information. Um, we know that your blogs are amazing and they're helping so many people. With your help, so. with your word, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So again, don't forget guys, like and subscribe and we'll see you the next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.